Hi, do you have an HGX light extruder that seems to be randomly skipping? Let me show you how to fix it. Now I've recommended the HGX light extruder to a lot of people and I still stand by it being one of the best cheap direct drive extruders you can get. This can also work in Bowden, by the way. But after about 200, 250 or so hours, both of mine have failed in the exact same way, but it's super easy to fix and it's only gonna cost you maybe a couple of dollars. So come on in and let's get into the bench. So let's have a detailed look at the HGX. So in my case, I had issues with it just randomly binding for no apparent reason. And it feels nice and smooth, nice and solid. There's a tiny bit of play, but nothing that I would worry about. So why does this randomly fail? Let's take the motor off and I'll show you the inside. So after removing the motor, it becomes apparent that something is a little too loose because you should not be able to spin this um, like a fidget spinner. This should be nice and smooth with a tiny little bit of resistance between the gears, but this is obviously too loose. So after playing around with uh, both of mine, having a good detailed look, I saw that this bearing here has play in it. And it's not a lot, but it's enough that it will suddenly just go slightly uh, off balance and kind of tilt um, inside of the casing and it'll bind with these gears. So let's start by removing all these three screws and I'll show you what you need to fix this. Now that we have our three screws out and also remove the tension screw for it from the idler arm, uh, let's just pull this front cover off. And I recommend you remove this gear right here. Careful, there's a really small needle bearing in here. So make sure you don't lose that. I would just try to keep it upright like that. Let's remove the idler arm. And now we're left with the basic body and this final gear. So to get this off, you might have to slide it out gently. Um, there's a little edge here that you might get caught on, but it should be nice and easy to get out. So what is the issue here? The issues are this bearing and this bearing right here. They have a tendency to fail. So I'm not sure if it's just bad bearings or um, that they're not rated for the load, but they just fail. And the first time I saw this on the other one, I immediately started measuring them and fi figuring out which kind of bearing they are. And this is the one. Um, I can't remember the name, so I'm just going to put the name right, right here somewhere on the screen. So you can get these on, on AliExpress, Amazon, wherever anyone sells uh, bearings. Uh, I'll put a link in the description of a high quality bearing. You can go cheap. I did go cheap on this. Um, so my total cost was about $4 US after shipping and taxes. So how do we fix this? Well, we were just replace these two bearings. It's uh, quite easy to do. First thing we need to do is get these bearings out. Now, the easiest way to do this is by brute force. Uh, you can do that. I would not recommend just pure brute force and forcing it out um, because you could do, you could take a screwdriver, pull it in and skewing it and pushing it out. It might work. Uh, what I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to take something that's round and bigger than the bearing, but not too big. So if you have a socket or something, 
Uh, this is an idler uh, that I tore off something else. And I'm going to place this um, like that. And then I need a something that's bigger than the inside of the bearing, which is going to be a M5 bolt. I'm just going to put it on there and I'm just going to whack it with a hammer. So let me find my hammer and I'm going to show you how to fix this. Okay, I have my hammer and I have my base piece that the bearing can fit into. I'll place this on there, the M5 on that bearing, and I'll just whack it. Just gently, it'll fall out easily. So we have one bearing gone. The other one is a little bit more tricky because you can't just put, put an M5 in there. But I found that if you just put a M3, I'll have a M3 by something long. I'll put it in, but on the side of the hole. So you push it off to the side of the hole and you'll still hit that little edge on the bearing. And again, just a gentle tap with the hammer and it should come out. And there we are. So now that we have our old bearings out, we can put in the new ones. Putting them in is uh, quite simple. Place them in, push them down. You might uh, run into having to use a little bit of force, but you should not need any tools for, to do this. This back one is the one that's giving you the most resistance, but just pushing it, pushing it in with my finger is all that it's going to take. So let's reassemble the, um, the extruder and I'm, I'm going to do this so that you can see how I do it because I've done this quite a few times by this point. So put in the idler arm. Let's put in the um, the big gear. Then put in the second gear. <laughs> put on the body and put in the screws. And now it should be a little bit firmer. There shouldn't be any major play side to side. And you have your HGX back in working order. Now that's a fully working HGX light back for action. I'm going to put this into my Rook and do some printing. I hope uh, this helped you a lot. If it did, please uh, hit that like button. If, if you're not already subscribed, please do so. It really helps me out. So until next week, I'll see you.